G'day folks, it's time for a controversial topic and I'm going to give my thoughts on having tangs in a smaller aquarium. So when I say smaller, I mean a tank smaller than 75 gallons. Um, so as you can see in front of us already, I've got a tang in a 55 gallon aquarium. So this is a two foot by two foot cube. Um, so yeah. I'll, um, I'll elaborate as to why I think this in some cases is okay. Um, so to begin with, I suppose, you know, um, this will really all come down to common sense. Um, I definitely wouldn't suggest all types of tangs to be doing this with. Um, there's only really a few or in particular one species type that you can really do this with and that's a bristle tooth. Um, so in this aquarium here, I've got a two-spot bristletooth tang. Um, I think it's also known as a blue-eyed coal tang. Um, so these fish won't get all that huge as far as most tanks go. They'll probably get to about, um, I think it's around 15 centimetres, something like that, or I think it's about seven inches. Um, so not the, not the biggest fish by any means, but, you know... Definitely much bigger than what this tank here can hold when it gets to full size. So currently this tank, this fish is about only oh, five centimeters, maybe even six centimeters. He's really, really small. Um, and he's, he does pretty well in this tank here. Like I said, having a tank in a smaller tank, you really need to be, um, you know, conservative with what kind of fish, uh, fish tank you're gonna put in there and also, you know, being reasonable as to how small the tank is going to be as well. So this is a perfect design, I suppose, for the purpose of what I'm doing here with this tank I've got going on at the moment. So I've got kind of just a large bomby just in the middle. It's pretty much like a little spire kind of thing just happening in the center there. And basically what it gives is it gives the, all the fish in the tank, all the room to swim around the entire sort of bomby without being interrupted so if they want to they can just do literally circles all day long if they want to um you know and that kind of gives them the feeling of moving around a lot i suppose now this fish doesn't actually swim around a whole lot he'll kind of stick around to the rocks here you know maybe going amongst them and circle around and that kind of thing but doesn't he's not the most active fish by any means if anything i'd say that my angel fish um, a pygmy angel fish that's in here is way more active than him um so, and you also have to kind of, I suppose, know the reason why you're putting this fish in this aquarium. So for me, the reason why I wanted to put a tang in my aquarium here is because I actually had a really, really bad case of hair algae that just was absolutely untamable in this tank. Um, I have a refugium going on at the bottom of the tank in the sump. I've got a million snails in here. Um, and nothing, and I've done all the water changes in the world too, but nothing ever really seems to put away the um, algae. So I looked at the other options of what kind of fish you can get to help to, I don't know, remove the algae as well. Just helping everything else, you know, make getting the full kind of um, algae elimination that I can possibly, or the best, I suppose. I get elimination I'll possibly get with this tank. So I've got the refugium, got the snails. Now I'm just missing that last component of some type of herbivore, herbivorous fish that can, um, that can do the job. Now, well, op the options that you're left with in a small tank is really almost non-existent for um, algae control when it comes to fish. Angel fish, they're, rec they're recommended, but they do not do anything. Like I watch my little pygmy angel and he just he more just like every so often just has a little peck at a rock and they'll just kind of go about his business never anything meaningful then you've got the blennies um then there's there's too much there's too much stuff out there that just says that blennies are um non-resafe and you know although i've kept um some questionably reef safe fish in the past um i kind of want to try and do things right with this tank and just avoid fish where I can, you know. I've, I've been burnt before by keeping um, the wrong fish, and maybe being I've I've had the you know the pixie 
um, hawks and all that kind of stuff, and I just don't want to deal with it. So I don't want to deal with the potential of having a blenny of, of some sort that's going to potentially um, nip at all my corals in here. Just didn't want to deal with it. Not this time around. Um, so really, without the blennies, you almost have no option of being able to control algae. And, and even that, blennies don't really do the best job at controlling algae either. So the only thing you have left is literally tang. The tangs are the only other fish. Well, the tangs and um, the rabbit fish. Um, tangs and fair rabbit fish are pretty much the only other fish that you can really count on to be able to actually eat um, hair algae. But then you have a million people always telling you the same thing of do not put tangs in a small tank. They're too big. You won't get rid of them. You know, all those stories. Um, and look, fair enough. That's, um, you know, it's good to have people out there. It's good to have the, I guess we'll call them the, the animal activists, you know, the people out there who are solely out there to look out for the fish's best interest, of course. By all means, that's probably the, that's what that's absolutely the people that we need in this ho- this hobby is what stops total exploitation of animals within this hobby. You know, you imagine if you didn't have the tank police out there, you'd have, you'd have, you'd have, um, you know, these massive hippo tanks sitting in little little four liter aquariums. It just wouldn't be right. Um, and people, you know, you can come across some pretty, pretty, um, you know. I suppose we'll call them ignorant hobbyists in the um, in the aquarium hobby just do not understand and look that's that just all comes down to education they just don't know some people just don't know what fish you can keep some people just don't know what fish you can keep um, or can and can't keep sorry um, and that's where the tank police come in they help you to educate yourself on these kind of subjects and you know prevent bad things from happening to fish um, but then, like I said before, a little bit of common sense will come into play in this one. Um, so the main reason why I wanted to have this fish in this aquarium was to control algae. So I know that this aquarium here is large enough to be able to hold a small tang for a certain period of time. Um, and that certain period of time may be a year, might be two years. Um, really depends on the fish and how fast it grows um so long term this fish will probably not be staying in this aquarium short term absolutely what was the purpose of me getting this fish it was to control algae um would i recommend this for other people if this is the type of thing you want to do if you if you want to control algae in your aquarium yeah by all means go for it would you probably upgrade your aquarium to hold the fish most likely i dare say i dare say that if you were to purchase a tang and have it in a smaller you know two, a two foot by two foot cube would be the minimum i would put a fish like this into and the smallest one being the um the the two spot bristle tooth um you know this would be the minimum tank i'd put it in I've already got thoughts of upgrading this aquarium, you know, you get that itch, but I kind of have to stop myself and tell myself that no, this is the one, you know, it just gets a bit too expensive the further and further you get up the chain when it comes to um, aquarium keeping as particular um, salt water. So final thoughts on the subject is, would I keep a a tang in a small tank? Yes. Would I recommend it? Yes. But you know, with reason, with reason. Smallest tank could probably be a 55 gallon, two foot by two foot cube. Um, this, the bristle tooth is probably the best one to keep in this um, tank just because they're slow growers. Um, they're not particularly active. They, they can get fairly active, but you see this guy here, just kind of, he's no more active than, the, than the, any other fish that's in this aquarium here. Um, and would I suggest it for everyone? No. I would suggest it for people who have been in the hobby for a little while at least anyway and at least have a a strong foundation of sort of knowledge on reef keeping and how fish are going to go together. A lot of research on your fish before you buy them. Highly recommend it. Anything you buy, check a million times before you go ahead and buy a fish because 
you know, you see something, an article that'll say a fish is reef safe or whatever, only to find out that you put it in your tank and it's not reef safe. So do everything you can, read it, watch as many videos as you possibly can, learn as much knowledge. Um, but yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my stance on it. I've given thought I've given enough um, explanation as to why I'll do this, and yeah, peace out.